Man, I haven't been on a plane in a while. Me neither. Can you believe I missed the airplane food? No way. Yeah, and now I'm having some. I don't know if I can miss it ever again. Ha! <laughs> hey, have you noticed that that woman over there has been staring at us? Yeah, she's been doing that for a while. And I know this is going to sound weird, but she kind of looks like she could be your twin. Yeah, okay, what? Is she one of my doppelgangers now? Ha! <laughs> that would be hilarious. Right? But hey, I'm a dude, so... Oh my god! <laughs> The top half of her body just... Yeah, it did. And not all Michael Tans are dudes. <laughs> Uh-oh. So, Michael, how are you, my friend? I'm good, Alex. I'm uh, feeling great. Still D-list actor. Uh, still aspiring to be a C-list actor. And my last name is still Chan. Michael Chan. <laughs> and you are? I am the bearded one, uh, Alex Blackburn. <laughs> Do you always have to remind me that I can't grow a beard, buddy? Like, every episode, you bring up your glorious, beautiful, sexy, manly beard. I'm my, sitting uh, here with my Asian genes that don't allow me to grow anything. My uh, my fair, wife, man. my wife donate after she uh, grows a certain amount of hair, she cuts it off and donates it for for wigs for children. Oh, that's and nice. Maybe I could, you know, when I my beard gets a little bit longer, I can cut it. I'll send it to you in the post. Oh my god, that'll be creepy. I'm just gonna not think it's from you and think it's from one of my doppelgangers. <laughs> Or I'll think they have murdered you, and that's like the, the the little warning message is like, look what we did to Alex Blackburn. Yeah, exactly. Um, I wanted to kind of get started and talk about a couple of films that you've seen. One of our horror fans, uh, Alyssa, and a little shout out to Alyssa, to all, we'll tag her in this Hello. episode. Uh, she's um, a huge horror fan. She's got horror tattoos all over. She's She's a great character. And she recommended this film as well, and it's called Willy's Wonderland. Can you tell me about that? Ah, Willy's Wonderland. It's a Nicolas Cage movie. Really, I can just stop there. Because <laughs> most people, as soon as you say Nicolas Cage movie, it's like, okay, I know what this is. No, but it's like, uh, have you ever played Five Nights at Freddy's? Yes. Okay. So it's kind of like that. You have this Chuck E. Cheese-like place. And Nicolas Cage, I don't want to spoil too much, ends up there for a reason and ends up battling those things. Oh, wow. Is I heard something about he's got no no lines of dialogue. Is that he doesn't correct? he doesn't speak the entire movie. He does not speak. And that is impressive. Um, it is Nicolas Cage at his most Nicolas Cage without being full Nicolas. It's weird. It's it's. Because you expect Nick, Nicolas Cage to talk. You expect him to go absolutely bonkers. But he's able to channel all of that Nicolas Cage into no lines. It's 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 a sight to behold. I love that movie. Like It is so much fun. And just watching him go crazy without lines is, is glorious. It is glorious. It, it's a must-see. I, I, I think a lot of people... I think a lot of people forget how good an actor Nicolas Cage is. He is. He's an absolutely phenomenal actor who's just willing to essentially do anything and go to any crazy lengths as long as he's, I guess, having fun. And uh, it's something I aspire to do too. Like, I literally don't... 
I have very few restrictions when it comes to how crazy a film can get that I want to be in. Like I, I'm willing to go anywhere. It's just that most people don't see me as as that, right? Everyone sees me as the dad. And right now in my community, I'm like the Asian dad, right? That's what I'm known as. If any of you producers out there are thinking of doing some crazy wild movie and you want like some Asian dude who can channel his own Nicolas Cage, but you know, my making my own, book me. <laughs> we'll see what insanity we can make. And before we continue on uh, Willy's Wonderland, I'd like to plug mm-hmm. your Christmas movie. Can you tell me? Can you tell me the title and the brief? My Christmas? Oh, you mean yeah. the one that's on the GAC, Great American Channels, or Great American Country? It's called Angel Falls Christmas, and I play a doctor. It is not a horror. It is. It is a cheesy but super fun and sweet Christmas movie. Uh, it also stars my good friend Samora uh, Smallwood. She is a phenomenal uh, actor who's also in Star Trek. She's Lieutenant Amin in Star Trek uh, Discovery. She's on uh, Pike's Enterprise, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing her in uh, Strange New Worlds as well. But yeah, oh, that's um, awesome. That's awesome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's a uh, Jessica Lowndes and Chad Michael Murray film. Those are the two main stars. And uh, uh, Samora plays Jessica's best friend in that. And I play, uh, like I said, a doctor. I'm Dr. Chan. Great last name. Uh, Dr. Chan is a co-worker of uh, the main character. I've uh, I've tried to find a place to watch it in the UK. And I've, I'm only being pointed towards streaming sites. And I don't want to do that. Illegal streaming sites. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm happy it's, to purchase it, but it's not on iTunes, or it's obviously on a, you know. Um, I don't know if you want to, I mean, call this a horror story. I don't think it is, but essentially, you know, Hallmark used to dominate the uh, Christmas movie market, right? I know Netflix is pushing into it, Lifetime is pushing, Hulu is pushing, everyone's pushing their Christmas movies, and honestly, the more cheesy Christmas movies, the better. But here's the thing, uh, GAC is a brand new channel. They just started actually okay. with another uh, film back in, in the fall starring Jessica Lowndes and Chad Michael Murray. I forgot the name of it uh, at this moment, but yeah, they, they started their, their run with, with one of their films and now they're pushing their own Christmas movies and they're going up against Hallmark. And it's like a, it's like a Christmas movie war. Yeah. Uh, and it might be a horror story for Hallmark because if GAC kicks their butt. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or um, it could be a horror story for GAC because they'll they'll start and then flounder and not do, I don't know. I want everyone to succeed, but. Yeah, I, I can appreciate that because um, I was living a bit of a horror story today. I won't go into too much detail, but in mm-hmm. terms it, uh it involves people breaking COVID, COVID-related rules inside oh, a building. No. That's all I'll say on that. And with this being the anniversary of me being a hospital with COVID pneumonia, that wasn't um, to my liking. Uh, but <sighs> that's for another time and another podcast. Hey, uh, Alex. Yeah. What do you call an anti-vaxxer uh, disguised as their ex-wife's nanny? I don't know. Mrs. Delpfizer. <laughs> we can end the episode there. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, fantastic. We can't. No, Thank we you. can't. <laughs> I might cut that and put it at the end. <laughs> um, so you mentioned, I think it was uh, a little bit earlier today. You yeah. Met, I saw it, I think it was on your Facebook. And mm-hmm. it was it was kind of crazy. And... Um, if anyone's uh, a friend of Michael's on Facebook, you get a real insight into his into his brain. It's like um, it's like how I envisage the inside of Robin Williams's head. Oh my god! It was crazy. But I saw this image of Chainsaw Man. What is that? Oh my god! It's a manga I just uh, found out about. Uh, mind you, it's been here since 2018. Uh, it's by uh, Tatsuki Fujimoto. Uh, currently it's just manga there's no anime yet but it has been announced and it is nuts it's about this boy whose dad is like working for the yakuza and then owes like or was he working for i'm not far enough to know exactly what he but basically owes a lot of money to the yakuza 
And so the Yakuza end up using this boy to, I guess, make up his dad's d- debt after his dad kills himself. So this boy has, like, befriends a little devil and starts using this chainsaw devil uh, to kill other devils. Because that in this world, there are demons, right? And, and if you kill them, you can make money off of killing them. He ends up getting in trouble and the demon, the little devil, cute little chainsaw devil ends up uh, saving him enters him and then he becomes chainsaw man and now has to fight devils as chainsaw man um i consider it horror this is a horror manga uh there's like a ton like one of the first bad guys he comes up against is uh, like the zombie devil like he turns people into zombies and it's like grotesque and just it's just absolutely it's just gory as hell and and yeah like the battle is just insane uh, but I love it. Like the art style is right up my alley. It's and it's like crazy and spastic. The main character is a little simplistic, but I think it's on purpose because you know he was plucked away from his life as a teenager. Like, can you imagine growing up basically without any education and just basically killing things to survive, right? To pay off a debt, and that's your entire life. You would still be a pretty, I guess, teenage-like person when you're older, right? Yeah, but that sounds great. I, I I can foresee. I'm hoping that he will kind of grow, because he gets taken in eventually. Like he starts working for people who are devil hunters and stuff, and it's just so it's fun. It's so much fun, and uh, I was just really scratching that that horror comic slash manga itch that I have right now. Um, and, did uh, you um, have you got that? Is it on an iPad or is it paper? Well, uh, I there. Okay, so it is available uh, as uh, like like as paperbacks as volumes. I, I actually originally saw it at uh, at Chapters Indigo, which is like our main uh, bookstore monopoly brand, whatever, over here. But and because the art was so just eye catching and it, it's it just piqued my interest, I went online and then because I have the app Comixology, I found. At, like the volumes are all like six ninety nine, there. Uh, that's uh, American dollars, so it translates to about eight dollars or nine dollars Canadian, which is really cheap for an entire volume of manga. That's actually really good in UK money as well. Yeah, so I know it's digital, so it's not physical. But like honestly, I'm I I I don't need that much clutter in my life, so I'm happy. With <laughs> Tell me about it. I have if too you, much stuff. If you saw the third bedroom which is part of the extension or no we became available to turn into a bedroom downstairs it used to be the dining room the room has got stuff from my youth and my collecting habits and it looks like the end of raiders of the lost ark that's how it looks and you can barely walk in this room oh my god and i have to clear most of it but in the next two weeks because we have family staying um so yeah that's, that's yeah we have until sunday to clear a lot of our basement which is just massive amounts of clutter uh because we have to move stuff around yeah um, and we have movers coming in to help too so yeah it's going to be it's going to be nuts digitally it's really it's it's a good price and like i said i highly recommend it it's a lot of fun uh if you want like thought provoking stuff this is not it this is the i am having a ton of fun and i love horror type of manga to read that sounds that sounds amazing uh so chainsaw man we'll put a link in the show notes for that and it'll yeah. be like a, a clickable link within the podcast as well um just before we kind of uh possibly go go back to willy uh, willy's wonderland uh i've got a recommendation of my own and it's a horror book or a, a series of short stories and basically it's a it's a series of short letters i may have mentioned before it's called the screw tape letters have you ever heard of this no, I haven't. Uh, so, screw tape. The screw tape letters are from C.S. Lewis, and C.S. Lewis's most famous Ooh. series of books are *The Language in the Wardrobe*, *Prince Caspian*, and uh, yeah, those series of books. So, they're you know a massive writer, and C.S. Lewis stands for Charles Stapleton, by the way. That's what the C.S. Mm. stands for. Um, so, the screw tape le- letters. I won't look. I've just brought up the cover for it, and I have a copy somewhere. It's about the devil. And there are a series of letters in the entire book about the devil uh, telling his son, Screwtape, how to coerce people to the dark side. And it's a really sinister kind of insight. And it would make... Would it work as a film or a TV show? I'm not sure. But 
it's a wonderful wonderful book and it's showing how broken some people's morals are and saying oh this is already working on on earth this is how people are uh, turning corrupt and how people are treating each other whether it's to their race or creed it's really fascinating series of letters it's really well written Goodness. and yeah it's it's very sinister um, Ooh, i'm yeah. gonna have to look this up yeah the screw tape letters so that the devil's son's called screw tape um but it's a great book great great book what's the just on a little side note what's the manga horror that has that demon person that has penises for hands penises everywhere oh my god i don't even remember right i need to look at that before now, I move on. now i have to, you know you're gonna like screw up my search right like I'm, okay <laughs> so manga penis hands manga penis hand hands is no this, maybe this is like mr maybe this penis is... handsman what Oh god. What what am I looking Oh my god. <laughs> you know, I just found What are you doing? Dick I... Fight Island? What am I <laughs> No. 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 I just I just googled on the UK Panties Google. with hands and penis. What <laughs> penis. is going on? No. <laughs> I just googled penis hands manga and I found a manual about castration. <laughs> It says it, castration manual, hands on, oh dick off. God. <laughs> Twelve days of anime. Number eight. My gateway drug was a dick hand. <sighs> what? What am I? What am I? Why? Oh what? God. What rabbit hole? <laughs> Did, is it parasite? Oh my god. Is it parasite? <laughs> the one where these aliens can take over people and then they transform. Yeah. <laughs> is it that? Is it that? You know what? I'm going there. I'm clicking on one of these links. Jesus. This is horrendous. She's kicking him in the balls with her high heels. That's terrible. God. No. no, What is this? A penis on this guy's forehead. Springy Um, stick growing. No, this is a hentai. No. Yeah. Dude, I'm giving up because my search. (laughs) I'm so going to get like targeted ads now. (laughs) So mine. Like okay, let's like let's, can I'm we gonna... not this episode <laughs> is now really strange and it's everybody else's horse. Like just yeah. listening to this, people are just gonna be like, What is wrong with these two? Oh my god. Oh my yeah, I, okay. What I'll do is I'll go back. I'll go back to the person that wrecked. Can we just this. talk about either Willie's Wonderland or Ian Rayburn's film <laughs> I watched? <laughs> Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my little uh, I'm gonna scratch through my notes. That's Chainsaw Man done. <laughs> Chainsaw my... Man and now Dick Hands. Okay. <laughs> is that the episode? Right. Is that the episode title? <laughs> what Dick Hands? <laughs> Can we have like D and then a bunch of like censored <laughs> symbols? And hands. <laughs> Just imagine the potential poster art. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you think there's a Michael Chan doppelganger with Dick? There is now, mate, in the multiverse. <laughs> Can you imagine my, like him trying to fight me? And it's like the whole idea is that this Michael oh Chan God. is just trying to screw me. <laughs> this is the best search ever because it's like a, a mistranslated thing as well. It's just, oh. I've got some wonderful, you know, this is this is a source of entertainment. So we'll be going God. back to Dick Hands at some point. Oh my god, is it oh Okay, okay, let's scrub that. <laughs> let's scrub that. I will I will find the recommendation someone was telling me about and actually talk about that man. It's a is this what happens when I get you too late at night, Alex? Like yeah, I yeah, apologize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I apologize. I have to put my kid to bed. <laughs> when I've when I've when I've gone through when I've gone through a, a bout of PTSD and filming uh, a, an event and uh, a lack of sleep and a burst of sugar and eating half a banana. Yeah, this is what you get. <laughs> eating half a banana, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, right. that's, that's what I do with the that, other that, half. That, 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 that's, just, that's just innuendo right there. Okay, Ian Rayburn, you made a short film and I want to talk about it before we potentially go back to Willy's Wonderland, which I don't see happening. But sure, Ian... <laughs> 
<laughs> and <laughs> Alex, the name of the film is? Is My Friend Wally. My Friend Wally. Okay, thank you, first of all, Ian Rayburn, for giving us the opportunity to see your new film. That It's on the festival circuit now, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's kind so, of a need, so, to, need to know if you can see it, you're lucky kind of thing. Yes. This is what I'm going to say. This is, to me, not usual Ian Rayburn fare. After the mind screwing that you gave me, when you had Jessica and I uh, judge experimental films at the Isolation Film Festival, I thought I could handle more experimental films. What I didn't expect was that Ian's film would mess with my mind so badly that I felt like I had just taken magic mushrooms. All I'm gonna say is I did not like it, but I also found that it was very, it's an ex if I don't know if he meant for it to be an experimental film, but it reminds me of the kind of stuff that when I go to modern uh, modern art museums in different cities, because I, I actually like doing that every time I go to like I travel, I try to find a modern art museum because I'm curious about what people think is modern art in different places. And this honestly felt like something that I would see in Montreal in their modern art museum, because holy holy moly they have a lot of video installations and they are trippy so it's a fun film and it's nice seeing ian and it's nice seeing caroline but i think i got lost i i didn't get fully get the point and i i it would this is one of those things where i'm gonna need another watch through and hopefully not be distracted and possibly hypnotized i think uh, i think ian's talent is undeniable and oh, it is in terms of filmmaking, his direction, the way the yeah, the way the films looks because this is made in a I think it was made in lockdown, um, but well, it would be yeah, yeah, and I I I really like there's oh, we're talking about some influences, but I kind of don't want to even say what oh, my, my you'll give too much the away. title character what the title character is or who is or whatever but there's there's influences across the board even where the fridge is opened you see you know references to ghostbusters and the yeah film critters yeah. but i i you know uh i was a little bit lost on the very beginning and where that went in terms of i don't know how do i describe this the experimental part of it that i understood as an experimental film i did get a little bit lost but wally is uh when they're having their friendly moments uh, between the, the two characters um, I think it's some fantastic moments there's some really nice references to um, the exorcist with some of the silhouetting and you know yes. they're playing together I thought some of it was fantastic some of it is really quite disturbing as well it and... is I, I I'm when, sitting when here. I, well, I've got as... to say, Mike. Before I forget, before, sorry to cut you off, but before I forget, yeah. When I when I looked at my dog the day after watching this film, I looked at her going, "What do you want to eat? What do you really want to eat?" <laughs> I was like, you eat, you want to eat dog food? That's fine by me. And if you get to see this film, gonna see this film, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. I yes. I thought I made a, a, a hilarious pandemic film with me on a toilet, but Ian had to taught me. That's all I have to say. He had to yeah. one up me on the toilet scenes. There's actually a Stephen King reference in a book. Not a reference, but a Stephen King monster. I don't know if he referen um, understood where that was coming from, but I really liked, I like how far he pushes things and and it is an experimental film in many ways. Uh, an experimental film in many ways. But yeah, technically uh, excellent as always. It and... is. I just I'm, I need to rewatch only because I was lost on the messaging. How about that? And that, yeah. I think in a way that's that's the that's what experimental film is like, right? Yeah, it, absolutely. It's you you have to really think and and you have to go through it because you miss a lot the first time through. Yeah. Caroline, like the stuff on camera with her, she's fantastic. She really she is, is amazing. Great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ian, we uh, we enjoyed your film. Yeah. We understood we uh, a bulk of it and terrified, horrified. Um, 
Yeah. And perfect for our audience. <laughs> and put it in a museum. Seriously, that that's where it belongs, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I could so see it being a cool installation. Like yeah. really. Oh my god. With surround sound. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I got some I got some bacteria based wipes out after watching that and I, oh, I had to wash my hands a few times. <laughs> As an aside, have you I forgot the name of the board game, but have you seen the the toilet slash plunger slash poop board game? No. What, oh my right, god. I, I was at Walmart. This. And then if I, I Google I this, what's it going to come up as? Oh boy. So so I was at Walmart and I was like, why is there like a toilet and a piece of poo uh, in the kids like toy section? So I kind of picked up and had a look. Basically, it's like a, a toilet and there's a plunger that you're supposed to plunge the toilet with, toilet with. So you put a piece of poop into the tank and close it. <laughs> And then there's a die, and then you put it in a slot. So the toilet itself is kind of like a dice tower. And then you fl- you press the, the flush, uh, you flush the toilet. The dice comes out of the toilet. And whatever number you get, that's the number of times you have to push the plunger into the toilet. And you just keep going until the poop flies out of the top of the tank. And then you lose. Is it from it's very house, bro? I believe so, yes. Uh, gaming toilet trouble. I think that's the one. Yeah. Regardless, <laughs> what? Why? Why are you having kids play with a literal plastic piece of poo? I mean, wasn't weren't poop emojis enough? Oh now, I mean, at least those are cartoonish. This looks literally like a piece of poo. Oh my god. And you rotate the toilet roll? Is there a toilet roll? There's a toilet roll on the side of the toilet. Oh, oh my god! Are there you, more I, than one toilet board? My my search is so messed up today. You know board what? game. This has to go. The toilet. The other other things we were talking about look quite rude. That's not going in the search. Oh no! No no no! Wow! There's two. So it's not Hasbro toilet trouble. It's Mattel flush and frenzy. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll cut this. I'll cut this. I'll shorten this. But I have to tell. Flush. Flush in frenzy. Oh my god. Flush in frenzy. Love it. Oh my god. I just saw another game by Hasbro called "Don't Step in It." And why it's is another. That, why is that poo got such a big smile on the box? I don't know. Now we're looking at poo games. Poo <laughs> games. Dick hands. Alex. Let's just bring it back to Willy's Wonderland. That movie is not a piece of poo. It is a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. What's the the premise of uh, Willy's Wonderland? (laughs) Nicolas Cage is a non-speaking badass dude who ends up in a Chuck E. Cheese-like place for reasons and has to fight off all of the animatronic things. Really, that's all you need to know. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. I will check. And it out it, well. it, it it's just it's Friday night at Freddy's, but with Nick Cage, and it's nuts. It's just bonkers, and it's fun. Now, speaking of Nick Cage, I think I don't know if this is the last thing you want to talk about, but I am so excited for that new Nick Cage movie that's coming out about Nick Cage. The unbearable weight of massive talent. Yeah, there um, you go. Nicholas Cage is gonna play Dracula. All I'm going to say is, can we get a movie that brings Keanu Reeves and Nick Cage together as vampires, please? I, I want to see, I want to see Keanu put on a horrible British accent again, and Nicolas Cage just go spastic. Uh, spastic means something else in the UK. Um, oh, I apologize. Is that bad, listeners? Um, yeah, it's to do with disability. Um, I am so sorry, people from the UK. I uh, cannot wait to... I want to see Nicolas Cage as a vampire uh, uh, relating being, to... Being a, a, a Tasmanian devil of chaos. There you go. That's fine. You weren't to know. It's uh, to do with a alteration in muscle tone affected by a medical condition. Oh, uh, spasticity. Uh, so it used to be a very terrible thing, kids would say. Uh, to other kids saying that you're a spastic. Oh, you're a spaz. Uh, yeah, so that's where that stems I've from. I've heard of that, that that phrase. Okay, well, now, thank you. That's a good little PSA. Don't say spastic. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. My my Chrome 
my Chrome tabs are horrendous. <laughs> okay, Nicholas Cage. We need to end this episode before before yeah, our wives we'll up, start yeah. wondering why all the Amazon suggestions are going to be like poop and penises. <laughs> and okay, so the unbearable weight of massive talent. Yes. I know, and and thankfully there was a horror connection with Nicolas Cage with the Renfield movie. That's his new Dracula movie. Um, yep. Nicolas Cage played Dracula, uh, so a cash-strapped Nicolas Cage, which is relatively accurate because he's got massive tax bills, agrees to make a paid appearance at a billionaire superfans, a billionaire superfans birthday party, but is really an informant for the CIA since the billionaire fan is a drug kingpin and gets cast in a Tarantino movie. So, oh my! So Nicolas Cage, Pedro Pascal, and Neil Patrick Harris. Um, I like all three of those. Um, so yeah, that looks really interesting. <laughs> and hopefully, it's not a horror show, but that could be really, really interesting. And I am a big fan of Nicolas Cage. There's some crazy in him, um, but I like I like a lot of his roles. Uh, his Bad Lieutenant was fantastic, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, yeah, and I really like uh, uh, National Treasure. I know they're very cheesy films, but I really enjoy those. Those are fun. Those are really fun films. Yeah. So uh, I think I'll leave it there, Michael. Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> I think we've done enough damage to our I'm, listeners today. I'm going to have a deep clean of my um, my tabs now, so I'm going to close yes. them all. And now we all know that the real Michael Chan has horrible, horrible searches on his search engine history yeah and the doppelgangers will not there you go yeah okay see you all later bye, -bye. <laughs> take care this has been another episode of the hellbound podcast co-hosted by alex blackburn and michael chan editing and sound engineering are also by alex blackburn a huge thank you goes out to our first ever intro special guest katisha shaw if you like what you heard today, please consider subscribing or following us on your preferred podcast app. And to keep up to date with our podcast, please follow us on Instagram at The Hellbound Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and harness the darkness.